Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities of Mother Nature's recipes that bring the bare necessities to life. The bare necessities of life will come to you.
Hey, there we are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. Whatever time it might be where you are out there. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today, today is November 29th, 2021. And this is C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about entity framework today, a little bit about data access, a little bit about database architecture, and how you can put some stuff together there to make your application work with the database. All from C Sharp. Really good stuff we're going to get into today. I see a bunch of friends already here in the chat room. Let me bring it up and I'm going to put up a timer uh, because I want to make sure that we only go through about 40 minutes of this open Q&A that I've been getting into. We went a little bit longer in, over the past few weeks. I want to time box it, so I'm going to put a little bit of a timer there so we can make sure that we get done and we move on and get into our, our primary topic we want to discuss today. There it is, 39 minutes here, that we're going to talk to you out there in the chat room, answer your questions as long as they're on topic. If uh, We want to make sure that folks that are beginners Folks that are getting started with C-Sharp feel welcome and they can tune in and participate. Excuse me, I'm drinking coffee a little bit too fast here this morning, I think. Arshia, good to see you over there on Twitch. Bandit Tool, hello, hello. Moba420 asks, .NET 5, anyone? No, we're going to be doing .NET 6. .NET 6 is the long-term supported version of .NET that's available. Deborah Brada, good to see you in India. Dukasoft, hello, hello. Norman, are we going to be including stored procedures, asks Norman on YouTube. Um, I didn't have it on the agenda, but I can definitely talk about it, uh, certainly. Cesar, good morning to you in Brazil. A couple hours ahead of me, how you doing? Nitro Evil, good afternoon, underscore, so good to see you. Um, Edelper, hello. G1, how's it going there? Fezal, good evening to you in India. Sharaf, good evening in Egypt. Uh, you'd like to see a project using different files to register database sets. Might be a little bit further than I wanted to go. Let me see if, let, let's see if we land there. Um, uh, it is C-sharp time. That's right. Yazd82, good afternoon to you in the Netherlands and on Twitch. Wizards, hello, hello. Or is it Wizard Rs? Yeah, I think that's right. Aaron, uh, hello. How you doing there in Peru? Uh, Alexander is here from Ukraine. Uh, John's here from some latitude and longitude. Not quite sure where that is. How's it going, Jesus, in Colombia? Me, myself, is in Paris, France. That didn't sound quite right. That didn't, that didn't sound right at all. Good morning, Eric, on YouTube. Uh, databases are only rows and columns, comments Arshia. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. You think the stream title is wrong on Twitch? What's it say? You're right, it is wrong. Uh, let's update that. We're going to copy in the stream title from YouTube. Uh, that's a shame that it didn't, it didn't copy over. Not a problem. I will copy that in. And folks on Twitch will be up to speed. There you go. Um, no, I changed that. And it changed it back. No, no, no. That looked good. Yeah, we're good there. All right. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Charles, for pointing that out. Hey, Ricardo, in Jamaica. Andre's here. It's 3 p.m. in Slovakia. Very cool. Yeah, folks in in Europe, in, in Eastern Europe and, and Africa, it's a decent time in the early afternoon for you. Um, Tukies on YouTube is watching from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Just, just a couple hours of, uh, drive away from me. So good to see you. How you doing there, Farhad in Ukraine? Is this an entry-level course, asks uh, Nisha Khan. It's not a course. This is a discussion. This is, this is a lesson that you're welcome to ask questions of your instructor, th this guy right here, and happy to help you out as we go along here. But yeah, we try to keep this very entry-level, very um, non-intimidating and, and encouraging for folks to learn more. There's advanced topics that I don't want to get into. They're, they're a little bit further out that we're just not going to touch on. So, how you doing there? What's up, baby, on Twitch? Christopher, hello to you on YouTube. On YouTube, Inception asks, can we use MongoDB with Entity Framework? No. MongoDB has a has its own distinct driver that you can use that's um, a lot more focused and going to give you better interaction with MongoDB. Entity Framework doesn't currently work with MongoDB. Uh, how you doing there? Hoi. 
um, on YouTube. Mauricio says, good morning from Argentina. Are we going to talk about challenges of nullable reference types in EF Core and .NET 6? No, I'm not going to get into that. That's that's a little bit further uh, further down um, than I, I want to get into today. Good, good morning in Chennai, India. Isn't it evening, Partha? It's, it's evening in India right now, right? I have that, don't I have that right? It's it's very late in, in the evening. Uh, the Coop says, I didn't know Dr. Disrespect knew C Sharp. You know, change sunglasses. Change glasses. That's an Ethiopian caterpillar. No, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing that whole thing. <laughs> Thank you, the Coop. Is it the, the Coop? The Co op. I think it's the Co op. Let me know. At all, no Maste to you. Uh, Zpan3x, hello to you in Iceland. Will I dive into link query optimization such as ASNO tracking? I can talk about ASNO tracking. I'm not going to get into optimization. No. Uh, Luca, hello to you in Italy. Abdallah, the, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Best man in, wow. Greetings to you in the UK. Surly Dev, hello. And our friend Ancient Coder on Twitch. Happy Monday to you. Reiner, I'm sorry, Rhino de Jaeger. Howdy to you in South Africa. I hope, look, friends, um, one thing that I want to make sure if you're in if you're in South Africa, if you're in any of those countries, that the new variant of COVID has popped up, please, if you can, get your boosters, get your get your uh, vaccinations, Ma get those masks on, protect yourselves, please. Uh, it it helps everybody everywhere when you protect yourself from from uh, COVID. You try and be a little bit more hygienic. Um, this isn't political. This this is science. This is trying to help those folks that can't do those things. There, there are folks that don't have access to vaccines. There are folks who can't take the vaccine for whatever medical reason. Please do what you can to protect yourself and prevent the spread. Those, our friends in South Africa, South Africa that are watching, all the best to you and yours. I hope you're doing well. Um, and 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 stay healthy in the in the weeks ahead here. Of course, I, I, particularly in South Africa where that new variant was identified, but wherever you might be, I hope you're doing well. Entity Framework is mainly for SQL databases. Yes, frankly, delicious. Entity Framework is an object relational mapper. It helps us map our C-sharp code into database objects so that we can work with the database using native C-sharp interactions. It's really cool stuff. Um, you love the original glasses, don't change. Uh, thank you, my blue light glasses here. It's co-op, fantastic. Oh, wait, Coop Co-op. You're a chicken-themed communal group. Oh, that's cool. All right. Um, yeah, Matrix Fritz. <laughs> Otavio, hello. Shelly, good uh, good day, good to see you uh, on Twitch. John Dennis, greetings to you in, in Kenya. You like the GitHub cap? The GitHub folks sent me this two years ago now? Oh, my gosh. So. Um, hello, Frank is in Sweden. MOBA 420 is in Vietnam, currently working on a project using Cosmos DB, Azure Active Directory. Are those popular now? Yes, for folks that are using Azure, that's a great combination. Great combination. Um, Mr. Poolshot, Camp, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, all, all the best to those folks. You, we've got to protect each other um, with regards to um, vaccinated and, and trying to prevent the spread of, of COVID because there are some folks that it, it's it, it's not just going to going to give them a little bit of a cough. <laughs> They're going to be a lot worse off than than you. I'm the only ASMR you're allowed at work. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the the fine stylings of of the C sharp Fritz voice here. No, these are not shooting glasses, Eric. These are Gunner glasses. That 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 didn't sound right. Um, the name of the company is Gunner. G U N N A R. They make these blue light blocking glasses. Um, I, my eye doctor particularly recommended that I wear them because I I'm staring at screens so much. We want to make sure protect my eyes so that we can focus and be able to. Uh, do more coding. James Foreman, hello, good morning. Unhip Coder, how's it going there? TG, good morning to you. Um, Arshia asks, do we need databases for every kind of website? Is there any website that doesn't have a database? So 
let me show, let me give you a little bit of inside baseball here. You saw the cat behind me? Did the cat sneak in? No, oh, darn it. Yeah. Um, so you don't need a database for every kind of website. In fact, the .NET Conf website for years, only up until this year, did not, um, it did not use a database. It had a, a, an Excel spreadsheet that was saved out into a hidden folder that, that you couldn't download from. And we used a library called Link to CSV to read data and cache it aggressively in the database. So the database would start up. We'd read all the data from that. I'm sorry. The website would start. We'd read all the data from that spreadsheet, put it into memory of the website, and we just accessed it out of memory and cached all the all the responses aggressively, right? It didn't have to regenerate stuff because the website didn't change because unless there was an update to that spreadsheet. Well, that spreadsheet wasn't updated unless we deployed and halt an entire update to the website. If we deployed not an entire update to the website, it restarted. If it restarted, it reloads the contents of that spreadsheet. Really cool stuff. So... I think the cat ran out. Yeah, I don't see the cat here. Um, yeah, that's frustrating. I'm trying to keep the door closed and cat out, and in it comes. Watch the dog come wandering in next. Hello to you, Prothigy. Um, and uh, is that Burka from Istanbul? Welcome. Um... John or not asks, is there a library or some similar that has the needed identity types to be able to use ident ASP.NET identity auth attributes? You are way off topic here for today. I'm so sorry. Um, the, you, there are ways to build in, and adapt for that. Check out my friends on the 420 show, uh, Christos, um, that can help you out with that. Uh, that is way far advanced for where we're going to be today. Um, so what was, I just had something pop in here. Uh, no, um, this is what I get for having all the, uh, all the sounds, all the things open over here. Um, we'll have to come back to this. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hello to you, Jose in Venezuela. Cats are liquid. They go through every closed door. Uh, a little bit like that. Um, is that DapDev? Hello to you in Brazil. Uh, Cameron's here from Kurdistan. How's it going? So, uh, not a problem with being off topic. It's, uh, I, I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to dive in and try and answer questions <coughs> that are significantly off topic that, it, quite frankly, there are other folks who um, can allocate and, and give more um, more time for a question like that that it's due. So, um, this weekend was the American Thanksgiving <clears throat> holiday weekend, of course. A nice turkey dinner with the family. Um, <clears throat> spent some time traveling to, to see uh, the, my wife's family. Great weekend. Uh, so happy the kids had some time off, and uh, we got to yeah, we got to spend some some time together with folks that we haven't seen in a little bit because everybody's running and, and busy at the beginning of the school year here. Hey, reset on. We're on Twitch on uh, the Visual Studio channel, all one word, Visual Studio. We're on YouTube on the .net channel, D O T N E T. I'm gonna get some music playing here in the background. I'll come to those next questions that have popped up there. Uh, this is Stream Beats from Harris Heller. This is music that is DMCA free, royalty free. Listen to it wherever you'd like. Yeah, there we go. There's um, all kinds of genres of music there. Most of them instrumental. And you can uh, check it out at streambeats.com. There's playlists for Apple Music, Amazon Music, even Spotify. Really happy to support those folks and uh, the music that they've been putting together. You can even download songs if you want to listen to them on your on your uh, mobile device or you want to be offline and be able to inter interact with those. Thank you so much to Harris Heller for making this music available for us to listen to. 
today. Um, Mighty Mike Rules, hello to you on YouTube in Germany. Good to see you. Lewis asks, on YouTube asks, is it possible to create custom database design languages with C-sharp? What do you mean by database design languages? Like, you're working with SQL Server, you're working with SQL Lite, you're working with MySQL. What kind of custom database design language are you looking for? It's, you're working with SQL. There you go. Will I talk about EF6 to EF Core 6 migrations? No, I'm only focused on EF Core 6 migrations. Um, Lost Warlord asks, is netcore.net? What about .net 5? Is it .net 2? Yes. They so this is this is the versioning questions that folks have in in how the product was named and evolved. Um in the beginning, there was .NET Framework. Back in 2002, Microsoft shipped the .NET Framework as a, as a unification of runtime, base class libraries, and programming languages that you could use uh, that ran on Windows. It shipped with Windows. It's part of Windows. .NET Framework, really cool, and it had six different programming type... Prog uh, uh, yeah, program types that you could build. Not that complex. But things over the last 20 years have changed and evolved. And um, .NET Framework evolved, and, and there, a new version was released called .NET Core. .NET Core was designed to be open source from the get-go, cloud-optimized, and available for folks to enhance and bring into different places as need be. Um, we saw how much folks were using .NET Core, the benefit they were seeing from that, the performance enhancements available in .NET Core, and we started to bring over the more popular desktop programming uh, program formats, WinForms and WPF. Now, .NET Core is optimized for the cloud, so you can build with Windows, Mac, and Linux, but these two very Windows desktop application specific uh, programming models we brought over as well, and they're available for you to program with also. Now, when they came over, it really was the merging of, of two different types of .NET, and that became what we call .NET 5. We didn't want to continue calling it .NET Core because it now had some of those Windows things that were always there in .NET Framework. WinForms WPF came along in 2008. So... Um, it became .NET 5. .NET 5 was labeled as a current release for support purposes. And um, just, what, three weeks ago? Three weeks ago? We saw the release of .NET 6, the LTS support version, the long-term support version of .NET that has WinForms, WPF, ASP.NET for web development, Blazor for, mobile, for web development, and coming soon, .NET MAUI for you to be able to build and work with applications that are mobile and native on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. We're really excited for that. So I hope that clears up a little bit, Lost Warlord. I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, Hoy asks, am I planning a, to have a session on Identity Server? No. Um, there are other folks that talk about security that are much more uh, qualified to give that type of uh, session. And you can find their content both here on, on, on .NET YouTube channel and over on the Visual Studio channel on Twitch. Um, Unskilled Crab on Twitch asks, will I be going over many to many? Yes. Yes, we will. Um, do, 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 do. I should add that answer to the Fritz bot. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I should. Um, Unhip Cold Coder was old enough to remember that launch. That was a thing. How you doing there, boss fighter? Boss fighter. Yeah. Let's sit around the, the campfire. I'm going to tell you this. It wasn't dark and scary, Kay, but it was a, a it, it was a long growth cycle. Um, there aren't too many frameworks out there, too many programming models that have the longevity of .NET and the popularity of it as well, not to mention um, the, the raw performance of it. Support to Noda. No, I'm not going to talk about Noda. That's John Skeet's project. Let him talk about that. 
Nope, won't talk about NoSQL. We're talking about Entity Framework. We're talking about relational databases today. Sorry about that. Can I discuss a bit about sanitizing DB entries validations in Entity Framework context? So you're talking about things like um, attributes. They don't really sanitize. Uh, but the data context attributes, yeah, we can talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um, <clears throat> how you doing there? M. Imamamu. I Imamu Hassan Khan. Hello. David on YouTube asks, when is, the, when is the best time to do migrations? Should I apply migrations at startup or only at command with .NET EF and how best to handle when in production and dev the different script? I think diff the, the development script. Um, that's a good question. When is the best time to do migrations? I prefer to do migrations by hand so that I have full control over when it executes. There are some folks that will encourage you to put the um, the execution of migrations inside your code <clears throat> so that when it first starts up, uh, when your application first starts, it, it'll run those migrations as necessary. The danger there is when your application is starting, it's going to try and run that no matter what. It's going to do that inspection and try and do that interaction. And the problem you're, you're going to run into is when it doesn't need to do it, it's still trying to do it. And you've lost control of that. So I like to have a little bit more control of when my database updates and run that by hand. Um, the different script, that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Um, you should be able to do a different script at any time between your development space and production. Um, and there's there's tools that'll help you do that. We don't, it, it, database tools, folks like, uh, I, I don't want to call out any vendors right now because I don't, I don't, the tools that I used to use, I'm not sure if they're still available. Boss Fighter on Twitch says, .NET 4.6 is not shipped with Windows 7. No, Windows 7 shipped with, was it .NET 4.5? I forget the version that shipped with Windows 7. Um, but yeah, there was a different version there and you can always install and move things around. Um, Trevor on YouTube asks, will I discuss offline database usage and syncing? No, that's, that's off topic. Um, just working with databases and trying to get stuff saved into a database. On Twitch, Eduardo Embraga says, I love you, C-Sharp. Thank you, Eduardo. I love talking to all the folks that are watching here and and tuned in. And that's why I'm going to hang out for another uh, 18 minutes here to chat and answer some of your questions before we get into today's lesson. Um, Ebdal Hakim, hello to you in France. Um, Boss Fighter X says, Entity Framework is the best framework for database access. Hats off. It's... Pretty good stuff. Uh, Dapper is pretty good as well. There's other libraries that that are appropriate for different database vendors, different database uh, management systems that are pretty good as well. But as a generic, general purpose one, pretty good. Pretty good. Will I use code first or database first design? Asks Unskilled Crab. I'm going to try and do both. Um, Mr. Gonzo on Twitch says, appreciate me streaming. This is great. Thank you, Mr. Gonzo. Appreciate that. And I've made sure to put up the timer so that folks that are watching the recording, if they want to skip past our discussion here, if they don't want to participate, they can skip right ahead to when we're done in about 17 minutes in, in the future from when I'm recording. Hang on. Let me say that right. In the future. Okay. Moving on. Um, hello, Al Lee in Stuttgart. Guten Nachmittag. Hope all of our friends in Deutschland are doing well. And another area that, that discovered a little bit of the, uh, the COVID variant. All the best to you and yours there. Um, Luis on YouTube asks, what's the correct way to manage navigation properties when nullable reference types are enabled? I haven't personally going into that yet and i don't have that on the agenda for today so i'm gonna have to pass on that um shelly with a question about github sorry i don't work for github um you're gonna have to you're gonna have to ask the github folks sorry about that 
John or not at, on Twitch asks, can EF handle polymorphic associations? Ooh, a model that belongs to more than one other model on a single association, similar to active record ORM. I'm nearly positive that you can do that with entity framework. It's not something that I typically do. I like, I just stuff everything into one context, but I believe there's a way to do that. Um, but I, I don't have personal experience with it. Um, I, so I'm, um, I'm going to defer on that question. Tell you what, uh, ask me that question on, um, on Twitter. I am C sharp Fritz on Twitter. Um, and I can bring in some of the entity fr framework folks to that. And I'm, if, if it's possible, I'm sure they have a sample or a blog post that'll highlight that. Um, Wolf Wolf Dude on Twitch asks, will I cover when to use EF instead of repository pattern? Why not both? I like to use both. That helps with um, allowing you to change the structure of how you interact with your database, where your database is located, your architecture uh, with how you work with your database, when you put that repository pattern facade in front. If you're going to be considering changing architecture from directly accessing a database to perhaps something a little bit more flexible, like uh, like microservices, microservice architecture, maybe you're going to consider changing storage mechanism, having a repository pattern in front of your entity framework interactions um, gives you flexibility to shift things around a little bit. Yes, Redgate, David. Yeah, Redgate has a bunch of database management tools, and those database management tools are kind of outside what we're going to be talking about as developers here. Do companies use ORM, ODMs, or plain SQL? Once again, why not both? Absolutely. Um, because there's times where some of the SQL statements you're going to write are a little bit more complex than what the ORM is going to be able to deliver. So in one of the applications that I've, uh, that I've built and I manage, I have both a little bit of uh, entity framework and I have a little bit of direct SQL access using Dapper. In this way, when I need to do more complex database interactions, let Dapper go interact with that directly. When I need to do those simple, quick, just get some data from this table, do a simple filter and sorting, just do it with Entity Framework, and it runs just as fast. Um, you think EF6 is coming out with a new different script generator? N no, it's it. There's a um, there's a migration bundler. I don't think it generates different scripts. Um, that's right. Entity Framework can be used with the repository pattern. Doesn't make Entity Framework harder to use at all. No. Um, Fabian. Uh, yeah, three, five, four, five. No, I think four, five is what shipped with Windows 7. It, it's on the Windows support, the .NET Framework support website. Um, EF and Link makes your SQL bad. Ed, sorry, David. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with, with you on, on that because some of the, the, the simple statements that are just doing a quick select a bunch of fields from a table with this where condition join into another table and and put some ordering on it i think it generates some very well optimized code and works great for me so in my experience it's been pretty good um yes the database set is a repository like pattern um hey dr einstein von brainstrom um with a question about an async function if i have a single async function is it a good practice to do a for loop on that using async and do task when, when all? Uh, I do a parallel, I would do a parallel for on that if you can. A parallel dot for each. Um, Robert Cruz asks, has .NET 6 changed a lot compared to .NET 5? No, it has not. Um, you're, you're going to find that upgrading from .NET 5 to .NET 6 is going to be just a couple of version changes in your project files version number changes and you'll also find that all the features of dotnet 5 just got faster better performance in dotnet 6. 
there's cool new features in .NET 6 that are available to you that you can certainly opt into and code towards, but you don't need to in order to upgrade from .NET 5. Um, do, 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 do. Um, people don't like it because it's an abstraction on top of another abstraction and become complicated. Isn't that what we're doing anyway as programmers? Like .NET is an abstraction on top of all kinds of other things. And we're adding layers of abstraction on top of that. So <clears throat> depending on the level that you're coding at, if me as a web developer, if I can just call into a repository and say, go get me some data and I don't care where it's getting that data, that's a pretty effective abstraction. I like that. Unhip Coder on Twitch asks, what's the difference between Entity Framework and Dapper? So that's not the right Dapper. D-A-P-P-R, different. Um, we're talking about Dapper, D-A-P-P-E-R. That's a lightweight micro ORM that was written by the folks at uh, Stack Overflow that's designed to allow you to write SQL statements directly and it will map directly into your, um, your objects that you request. So where Entity Framework generates a, a database schema, allows you to generate objects from a database schema and interact with them. So Entity Framework is much more, not pre-planned, but pre-coded. Pre where Dapper is a bit more dynamic, it's smaller, and, and yeah, doesn't quite have the object hookup that Entity Framework does. Arshia asks, we have databases like SQL, but what is the job of Entity Framework? Sending data from the .NET app to the database? You got it. That's exactly what Entity Framework does. Yep. Um, I look like I review guns for a living. No. I wrote I write code for a living. Um, I might be American, um, but I write code for a living. Do I find my SQL skills suffer because of Entity Framework and Link? Asks David on YouTube. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, Abdel Hakim asks, "What's the best architecture using Angular, ASP.NET Core with uh, ASP.NET APIs?" try minimal APIs, hosting an Angular app, there's a Angular template that ships with .NET 6 that has that all configured. Um, you're going to find it is the fastest framework available for you out there. How you doing there, Ricardo? Hey, Wayne in South Africa. Good to see you. Hoy asks, will I talk about database design and microservices? No. That's off topic. Uh, John or not? Uh, no. Um, Jose, how do super keys or composed keys in Entity Framework, best practices. N not gonna get into composite keys. We will talk about primary keys and foreign keys, but not gonna, I, I can show composite keys, but not gonna really get into it. Um, will Windows ever ship with modern.net? No, it will not. Um, it, our current plans are to, to keep .net separate so that we can version it separate from Windows. Um, and, and not have to wait for Patch Tuesday in order to publish updates to .NET. You can get .NET patches through Windows Update, but it will not ship with Windows. Windows has .NET Framework. If, if Windows needs updates to .NET in order to support what Windows does with .NET, then it will be patched. But right now, the the design goals, the servicing goals of the .NET team are to keep it versioning separate from Windows so it is a separate product and can can be updated as quickly as possible. When when need be, of course. Hello to you, uh, Prof. Daly in Durban, uh, South Africa. Uh, wir lieben Stuttgart? Okay, sure. Um, David on YouTube says, I thought you didn't need to use a repository pattern with Entity Framework Core. You do not need, you do not need to. I like to so that I can change things around. Um, how to use GraphQL with Entity Framework. Off topic, we'll get to that when we get into our ASP.NET Core, uh, modules, probably in the, in, in the March timeframe. 
Um, Ronnie's here from Indonesia. How you doing? You love Entity Framework. Have some technical difficulties when updating multiple rows. Okay, I'll I'll take a look at that. We'll we'll cover that. Uh, we showed a little bit of that er, uh, last time. We'll get into it a little bit more. How you doing, Aztec Consulting? Robert Cruz on YouTube asks, if I buy a book on C Sharp 9 and .NET 5, will that be different from the newest version of both technologies? It, it'll be different, not significantly different. Everything you learn can and still will be usable. Um, worth noting, Entity Framework can also make raw SQL queries when more flexibility is needed. Yes, and we're gonna. I'll probably show a little bit of that today. Um, have I seen JavaScript benchmarks interacting results for Blazor? Um, they're two different things. The, if, if I were to run high compute things, Blazor destroys JavaScript. If I run high DOM interaction things, JavaScript is better than Blazor. They're two different things. Um, Etil comes from JavaScript and moving a program, moving to a program in C Sharp. Don't understand what's so unique about Entity Framework. Uh, do I have an example for a library that does the same in JavaScript? There is nothing in JavaScript that does the same as Entity Framework. Um, you'd be looking for something that runs on Node, and I don't think there is a JavaScript object relational mapper out there that folks are using. R. Blake, hello to you in Germany. Um, Girish on YouTube asks, what's the alternative to Entity Framework? How other complex applications are building? Um, folks use Dapper. Folks will code directly against the database instead. Um, they, there's different techniques to interact with it, um, but Entity Framework is going to get you there quickly. Um, dun, 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 dun. Is um, is OAuth used frequently in real-world projects? Yes, it is. Uh, particularly if you want to integrate, you want to allow folks to be able to log in to your website with, with GitHub, with their Microsoft account, Google account, Facebook account, Twitter account. You'll find OAuth and OpenID used throughout those. Um, doo -doo -doo. If you're using EF, why use Dapper? I already covered that. Um, there's other there's other features that are a little bit easier to work with coming in from Dapper. Um, please stop repeating questions. Um, Robert Cruz uh, from SQL Raw is that basically Dapper? Not quite. Will there be a WebAssembly compiler for Maui? Asks Mighty Mike Rules. Why? Um, you're introducing. You're introducing a lot of complexity there that's not needed. No, uh, not currently planned. Um, what's it like upgrading EF5 core to EF6? Is there breaking changes? No, there are not breaking changes. Should be as easy as just changing a version number in your project files. Um, Garish, you, you've asked that same question now three times, four times. Um, yeah, abstractions, right, Wolf Wolf Dude? We layer abstractions on top of abstractions. So, nah, it doesn't kill performance. Um, what you do inside those abstractions will affect performance. But taking that approach doesn't specifically kill performance. Two minutes left in the open Q&A. How you doing there, Christian, in South Africa? Was ASP Core ADO PG part... I don't know what you're referring to, Prothigy. So, no. Um, how fast is EF to Dapper? There's benchmarks you can find out on the internet to take a look at that. Uh, particularly, take a look at the .NET blog. There is a benchmark, uh, my friend Jeremy Lickness, who's the program manager for the Entity Framework team. They posted some benchmarks and some graphs there. What headset am I using? This is the Audio-Technica BPHS-1 that I use. It has a compression mic up here. It picks up my voice very, very nicely. Where can you find it? documentation for .NET on Mac OS? docs.microsoft.com there you go R. Blake um, and it's exactly the same as it is on uh, .NET 5, .NET 6 exactly the same as it is on the other platforms Microsoft SQL versus Postgres which is better for .NET 6 um, depends um, 
It depends on what you're doing with it. Um, one minute to go here in the open Q&A. At the end of the day, EF is so fast at crud, what we usually use databases for. Totally agree, Boss Fighter X. You'd love to see an EF console in other ORMs. You can run a command that puts you into a live console, make real-time database queries using the ORM. That's, that's kind of a neat idea. Um, and you can do stuff like that with .NET Interactive Notebooks. So that's kind of a thing. We do need to start to code in about 30 seconds. Um, what's the disadvantages of Entity Framework Core compared to MS SQL? Shara Fudin, run from that. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, those are two different things. Will Visual Studio for Mac support C++? I thought it did. Um, Prisma ORM, there you go. Thank you. Kademo on Twitch. Um... Let me see here. Two, 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 two. Is EF better than SQL, Alchemy, and Python? Two different things. Um, GraphQL, has anything changed? Changed from what? There we go. We are at the end of the open session here. Um, yeah, look at these questions. Come on now. Come on now. Let's move on. Let's get into... Yep, time to move on. So thank you so much for the, the Q&A today. Let's get on and let's talk about let's talk about working with the database, working with we didn't we we left off last time. We didn't really get into doing updates. We didn't get into deletes so much. So let's get into talking about those. Talking about one to many relationships between tables in our database. The, the situation the the uh, sample we were talking about was around blogs and blog posts, blog posts and authors, uh, blog posts and tags. A blog post could have several authors, a couple folks that that write it together. So how do we set up the relationship so that a blog post can have multiple authors? And a blog post could have many tags. I want to tag this blog post because it's about C Sharp and Entity Framework and .NET. I might have many blog posts that have those same tags, because then I'll want to be able to search coming back and say, find me all the C sharp blog posts. And I'm coming the other way and say, well, show me all the blog posts. And I want to see all the tags that go with all of those blogs. So different ways to approach this and interact with it. I'll try and remember to show <clears throat> a little bit of raw SQL. Let me get everything together, head over to the other desk. There we go, test, test. Good, we're still good. Um, I am feeling real good about today's stream. We're going to have some fun with this. All right. Monitor is up. And the uh, teleprompter is on here. Let's get over and uh, head over to the green screen and get into Visual Studio Code today. All right. Doing the walk to the other scene. Yes, the cat did wander in here, didn't he? Uh. That's what I get for not not closing the door all the way. He comes wandering in and Right? He's not hiding back here, is he? Is he? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. All right. And I've got a new mouse sitting over here for scrolling through all the posts coming in. Uh let me see here. Do, do, do. Time to get our hands dirty. That's right, Kay. Um all right. Let's see. For the tags, would that just be a field since the SQL can use a like command to search what it contains? Andy. Maybe. Maybe. Cats make all streams at least 10% better, says Thindalt. Nah, come on now. Come on now. Um... Might be some extra work, but having some kind of question dump website. So I do have a Discord that folks can ask me questions on. You can find that on Twitch. You can find the link to my Discord. Um, but certainly you can ask me questions on Twitter and I go through them um, afterwards. Um, this is not a standing desk. This is actually a high top. This is actually a bar table that I got from my favorite Swedish furniture store. Um, it's a thing. All right. RGB in your computer adds 5% extra performance. <laughs> okay. That's a thing. Uh, why do I look a little out of focus? Like, 
Seriously? Am I out of focus? I think I'm out of focus. What the heck? No, there we go. It focused. I think it's trying to focus on my coffee. Um, move that back here. Maybe. All right. Moving on. So previously we left off. We were talking about and we were building a little program that, and I'm doing this all as a console application. So we have a little program here that um, allows us to create blog posts and save them into a database. Now, of course, you would probably want this to be part of a full featured website, right? That way, you can create your blog posts on the website, save them into the database on the website, and of course, present them on the website, right? WordPress with PHP does this very, very well. And of course, um, there's techniques you can run WordPress actually on top of .NET. Check out peachpie.io, P-E-A-C-H-P-I-E dot I-O, and you can learn more about that technology and how you can use WordPress with .NET. We're using this as a sample to show you how you can work with multiple data types together to to build an application. Um, and your application might be some other domain. It might be some other set of objects. And that's okay. We're just trying to make this easy for folks to understand and get into here. I, it was a little bit soft. I think, it's, I think the camera has cleaned up its focus now. Um, can you use bank tra transaction queries in EF Corp? Sure. Why not? Um, so, yeah, you might, uh, uh, Ian, uh, that's a very good point on Twitch says you might have, you might have a little script like this to load things into your blog site. Sure. Absolutely. Um, the stream is focusing on the code. It makes sense. That's right. Fabian. Thank you so much. Fabian on YouTube pointing out. Yeah, we're focusing on the code here. The actual deployment and building a full featured application. That's for another time. All right, let me refresh my um, my chat window here and my, there we go. And that's what I was looking for. Thank you so much. All right. For those of you that don't know, I think I explained this. I have chat loaded into my teleprompter right here on the camera so I can read the chat. And it looks like I'm looking at you because, of course, I'm looking at you. All right. So we wrote a, a little bit here about managing and working with blog posts. And I built this thing, AppDB Context, out here. And AppDB Context is a database context, okay? I'm using .NET 6. I'm using Entity Framework Core, and I, I showed us last time how we brought in the libraries for Entity Framework Core. And I built this class that references and contains a set of blog posts, this database set. Now, this is how we're able to make that jump from c -sharp code into the database. We're gonna go through this collection of posts. The database context knows how to connect into, um, into the database. It has this information right here. There's my connection string. There I'm saying I'm using SQLite. In, in this way, um, I get I get SQLite that'll work on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I don't have to worry about telling you if you want to try these samples. Go download a copy of MySQL and install it. Eh, go start up a Docker container with Postgres in it. It's SQLite. It runs everywhere. You'll be able to run these samples on your machine and get at least a taste of how to work with Entity Framework. And because we can change out the provider by changing a statement like this, the use SQLite here, you'll be able to have that rich interaction with whatever database provider that it is out there you can drop into Entity Framework. There's a bunch of them available. Yes, appdb.db is the name of the file that I created that is a SQLite database. So if we come up here, open this up, you'll see appdb.db. That is a SQLite database. Do I, I thought I had the SQLite database browser in here, didn't I? Don't I? Uh, open database. There it is. Right there. And now we can open up. And there's, there's my posts table right there with the, the 
couple of fields that we've defined for what a blog post is. Okay, not bad. Easy to understand and, and see there. And of course, I can run a query and see, right? Here's a couple of the, the blog posts that I've written into that. Okay, we wrote those last time. They're still sitting there in the table. And we're able to do that, to just recap briefly, we're able to do that with commands like these, right? Come here, there it is, right? Take a blog post, set some properties on it, and say context posts, add <clears throat> that post object. And then I come down here and I just say save changes and it writes them into the database and Bob's your uncle, everybody's happy, all right? Um, <clears throat> Can I talk about lazy load a little? No, I'm not going to get into that. Sorry. Um, do, 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 do. Yes, SQLite can't do date, date, time. It's kind of a string sitting out there that it that .NET's going to munge and work with here. Is that an extension to browse the SQLite database? Yes, it is. Um, if you're looking for it, it is... There it is. The SQLite extension right there. You can install that and be able to query... There's a couple other extensions that allow you to query SQLite. Uh, that just happened to be the first one that I grabbed to use. Okay. Now, in addition to being able to put data into that into that field, I can into that collection of posts. I can go and say, "Well, find me one of those posts that's in the collection by saying context posts find," and pass in the ID, the primary key of that blog post object. And because I named that property ID entity framework by convention, turns that into a primary key in the database. That's our unique identifier. You called it ID. That sounds like it should be the unique identifier. There it is. We can use that then to query and, and uniquely reference those blog posts. So I can use the find method here. To, to query and say, well, give me the blog post with ID number three. And when I have a blog post, I can pass it into a remove method on the posts collection and remove, delete that post. And I have to call save changes in order to complete that interaction. So um, let's comment out some more of this here. Right, because I will... Uh, no, no, leave leave that in there. Hang on. So, the, right, the next few lines here, this is going to go into the post collection. Order by descending the publish time. Give me the five most recent and cast that to an array async. In other words, Entity Framework, go execute that on the database asynchronously. Yield the thread until that comes back. And when it does resume right here after you've returned that array into the recent blog post variable. Then we're going to do this for each and just write out the list of recent blog posts titles. So let me do this. I'm going to jump in here and say, go find the second blog post and I'm not going to save changes. Okay. Now, when I run this to show you that you do need to use save changes. Um, I want to be in there. Yep. Uh, let's clear this. So now because I didn't call save changes, what happens with my code that runs here? Let me show you. So that's going to build. And even though I told it remove, find uh, number two, post with ID 2 and remove it. I didn't call save changes. It went back and fetched the list of posts and it still had the second post there. Okay. So save changes is important for you to, and there was a question earlier about, well, how do I work with and update multiple records? If you don't call save changes, it won't update those. Entity Framework has change tracking built into it. So that as you update 
records, as you change things in them, or you remove, or you add um, objects into your database context and the collections inside of it, like the posts here, if you don't call save changes, they don't get persisted back to the database. Let me catch up with chat here. Um, um, let me see here. Can we add a date and time column? Already got one, Robert. I've already got one. I've already got a date time column right there. Um, what would be faster to know if record exists? Find or any? I think they both end up generating the same SQL. Um, I believe they both generate the same SQL where it, it's going to do a, a, well, no, find is, find is going to try to return the entire object. Any is going to return a Boolean. It'll actually select a, a constant if the record exists when you use any, so. Um, Zerks asks uh, on YouTube, what does yield the thread exactly mean? It's a fine question. We talked about async and await a few weeks ago. I'll, I'll cover it again quickly. When you run asynchronous code, uh, not there. Like, right, this await statement here, it yields the thread. Something's happening on another system. It will, the, the thread that's currently executing, it will give that up. It'll allow something else inside your application to use that CPU thread, that, that processor thread, if there's demand for it. If there isn't, the, the async and await keywords are smart enough to not hand that off and to continue processing immediately. All right? So it's a way for you to, on a multi-threaded system that has a lot of action going on, it's a way for you to allow other processing to occur instead of just sit, having your users sit there and wait for the database to return content. So it, it's better utilization of your resources. How do you define a time column, not timestamp, but just time? Um, if you wanted to define just a time column, right? Isn't there a, isn't, right? There is no time only. Um, you could create, you could create a, come on now, right? You could create a date time offset, right? Why am I not getting completion there? Um, you could create a time span also. Why am I not, I'm not getting any of my um, auto completion here. Right, time span, uh, published time. No, no. Um, excuse me. That, yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, that's going to be annoying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm... There we go. Yeah. There is a time only you could use. Um... I... Uh, right? I thought there was... Yeah, time span is what I would prefer to use. Um, and that'll get you just a time stored in the database. For um, SQLite, it would generate just a string column and it would handle all of the time processing um, .NET side. Where is that database? Is that, is that on the same machine or on another server? No, this is all locally here. Um, how to delete an entity without a find method asks any Ina, uh, uh, any luck on Twitch. So let's get into and talk about with raw SQL. So we're working with the posts object here by actually running, um, link queries against this post collection. If I want to go and do some interaction 
with my post with with some data without actually having to go through and write link statement or or to without writing a find method i could do something like ctx uh where is it yeah there it is uh execute sql i'll say execute sql raw right um and i can do things like update what was the name of my uh, hey reopen that reopen that right um from posts right and uh yeah so close this right update posts set uh title equal um this is the second post where id equals two okay and let's dock that over here there we go so let's put some carriage returns in there so it's easy to see uh, da, da, da. there we go right now i'm executing this sql i'm literally taking that sql statement and saying execute it right now against the database i know more than you entity framework about about the database command that i want to run and here it is don't generate don't try and figure out what that what that command is to run what this is what i want you to run directly here and i'll run that one more time here and now now the title is this is the second post i've changed it directly and executed it using a sql statement right here now there were other versions there's that execute sql raw execute sql raw async if you want to have it return um it, have it return asynchronously and await maybe you're updating a, many many records you can um have it run asynchronously but there's also execute sql interpolated and execute sql interpolated async and the reason for that is because there are folks that want to be able to do something like uh var come on what is that post id equals two they're receiving a value from somewhere um what are you doing give me that yeah i know i know i'm about to write it in here there we go and you want to be able to do this type of thing where i'm going to take that value and and stick it into right into my sql statement here but we want to be careful with that because you can have things like sql injection that happen right because if post id <clears throat> is right um is something like this um drop table posts right if i let that just flow through well it's going to get jammed in here as part of that string interpolation that we can do with c sharp and we've got a problem that that's just been turned into right a, a security flaw you just dropped the database table we don't want to allow folks to do that so that's why there's also execute sql interpolated and what this does right i need to put the dollar there um really where did that come from uh, oh, I don't have it down here. Ta -da. Right? Come on. Come on. Um, that should work. That should work. Yeah, there it goes. Now, why didn't it like that? That's interesting should have been able to put those together hmm i'm not quite sure why it was erroring but 
what this does behind the scenes, I'm going to come back to chat in just a second. I see a bunch of messages coming in. What this does is where it has the interpolated bits here, it actually turns those into parameters, which then sanitizes your interaction with this raw command that you're sending to the database. That parameter will properly escape and handle if somebody's trying to inject some nasty SQL statements here that you don't want them to. All right? I'm not going to get too much further into what kinds of things <clears throat> you can do there. That's a more of a security question. But for us as database developers, folks that are interacting with our database, please use Execute SQL Interpolated if you don't know what values you're receiving. If you can trust the values you're receiving, that they are an integer. If they're a string, don't trust it. But if it's an integer, if it's a Boolean that you're converting, a date that you're converting and putting into your database, you should be able to trust those values. But I highly recommend use SQL, the, the execute SQL interpolated so that you get some sanit sanitization of that content before you try and work with the database. Let me take a look at chat now. Let me catch up. Uh, save changes works like a transaction. It completes the transaction, boss fighter. Yes. Mfon, hello to you in Nigeria. Um, it, there's a question here. I'm sorry, I can't read the the characters. Is EF Core and SQLite real time? Define real time. My, my queries come out of the database as quickly as I execute them. Yes. Are they real time? Give me some more on what you mean by real time. Um, is SQLite for development only, or would you recommend for production, asks Parth. There are many applications that use SQLite in production. Um, because it's portable, it's small. You can put it on a mobile device, you can put it on an IoT device, and it'll run great as a, as a little local database store that you can synchronize with some other database that might be running on a cloud, on a, on a service inside of your data center. It's a nice... It's a nice little database that you can use. Some folks will use it with desktop applications as a place to store configuration and to, um, yeah, store data that you want to cache locally. Um, Peter on YouTube says, if I only need a read-only version of the entity and it's already tracked, is find faster than an ASNO tracking query? You're, you're splitting hairs. And they're two different things. And we didn't get into ASNO tracking yet. Um, is it faster? Well, find is using the primary key to search. If you did the same type of first with the primary key, you're going to get the same generated SQL. Um, I know, for some reason, it, it, it's... I, I think my, my camera is just off focus here. It should be on autofocus. Am I gonna am I gonna regret this trying to focus my camera? I don't know. I, I can't tell because there's nobody over here for me to focus on. Um I guess that's a little bit better. I don't know. Yeah, my hands are clear. Alright. Um, for some reason, yeah, um, the, the screen should be clear. Uh, uh, why don't I await context post find? Um, find is not awaitable. Context posts, there is a find async that you can use that is awaitable if you want to. Um, but finding by a primary key should be immediate, single digit milliseconds to find that data and return it. Um, is it okay to call save changes in a loop? Asks Ronnie. Yes. Um, you're, you're asking for a lot of database interactions happening there. Tracking business is a lifesaver. Yes. When updating record, no need to refind it in order to save it. Yes. Um, so let's uh comment this out right where was it when updating a record so let's go get that record again 
Uh, second blog post. Right, and I'll, I'll use the find async this time. Await CTX posts, find async, and I'm going to find posts with ID 2. Right, and it has change tracking turned on. So I can say uh, second blog post title equals yet another blog post. And now I can say uh, CTX ctx save changes async and i can await that run that one more time and we'll get there we go yet another blog post so right i'm able to work directly with the objects and get these values coming back very cleanly to to work with here um yes there is time only and date only in net 6 but not necessarily in the databases. So Entity Framework provides an appropriate shim, a translation between those .NET data types and what the database supports so that it can handle your interactions properly. Um, can we use time only and date only? Just answer that. Um, time span is more of a duration, yes. The time of day property on a date time is a time span. Um, so it's it's a duration since midnight on that day. You're un unable to get time only and date only to work in databases, unfortunately, even though it works without databases. Um, yeah, if Entity Framework hasn't been updated for those providers, yeah, we're kind of stuck. These magic methods are amazing. Um, it's, it, they're not magic. These are abstractions that, that are documented and well-known, and you can see, if you'd like, I think I talked briefly about it last time, um, you can see what's being executed, right? I can not just say, uh, use SQLite, but I can say, what is it, um, log2, um, and I can, and it's going to give me an action, pass me the string, what do you want to do with this? So I can say console, write line, um, right? I could say uh, database executed this statement. And let's just say uh, DB, and I can pass in, right? So now I've created a little database logger here. So use SQLite and I'm adding on, let's just put it. So now every command that's executed, it's going to write this out to the console. So I'll .NET and run that one more time here and watch this. Now we're seeing a lot more coming out here because the database is logging. Every command is being sent over to that console write line and now I can see everything that happened, right? So, Compiling query expression, first to default, right? And here we got execute query execution planned and we can see where's the actual statement, right? So I did over in program, right? Find async two and it executed select top one because it was expecting to only find one value because it was a find operation. We're searching by primary key. There should only be one so it select top one to kind of force the database. Don't look past one record. Once you find this, stop. And it's got all the fields for my object. There's your from, and you see it's parameterizing, right? Where the ID equals and a parameter that it generated to pass in. And you'll see uh, there, uh, there's the property mappings for the uh, map for the object. Um, I'm looking for the parameter. Creating the database command. Uh, where's the parameter? I don't see it. There, there it was. Right. There's the parameter. Parameters, database type int32. <laughs> So you can scrub through this and you can see exactly what it's executing. There's the select where it was returning that total number of recent posts. 
with the appropriate order by as I request it. So for these simple interactions, it generates exactly the code that I need and works fine for me. All right, so let me go back over to my database context and I'm going to comment that out. Let me continue reading here. Um, and I need to get to one to many here in a second. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> if there are many users, SQLite would not work. That's right. Um, so a lot of folks don't use SQLite for a web server because SQLite is a single file. You're going to see contention with folks trying to lock and interact with uh, that one database. The website will try to lock and hold it to itself. Um, no, Shelly, we are not scammers. Who are you talking to? Um, yes, little Bobby Tables. Robert Tables isn't here today. Doesn't look like. Um, human World, you are asking to be bumped here. Um, why don't I await? No, you have to do find async to await it. And I did. Right there. So, um, I did not dig into as no tracking yet. No. Uh, okay, so the read only version. So let's do, right, if I say uh, here, as no tracking. Okay. When you execute and say, yeah, um, you can't do, yeah, that should have worked. Why doesn't it like that now? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. We're out past. I think. Do I want to put that over here? No, because find async. Yeah. Um, you would want to do as no tracking, and you would want to then do first uh, x dot id equals two. And um, first or default async. There we go. You could do that. Sure. Right? As no tracking tells the entity framework change tracker, ignore any changes that happen to this object after it's been returned. Um, that's okay, right? That That is typically something you're going to want to do on a web server when you're fetching data to read and present on screen because you're disconnecting the object at the point that you send it to, um, to the client that's interacting with it. So find async, find, uh, I'm sorry, as no tracking, very valuable for folks that are using with ASP.NET. If you're on a Windows Forms, a WPF app, a .NET MAUI app, where you're directly interacting with the database and you're waiting and making changes and you could have an object in cache that you're directly working with, you may not want to be using that as aggressively as you would in ASP.NET. Um, hey, how's it going there, geek girl? It is, it's focused on the coffee cup, rats. It, try and get it over here. It's, yeah, my autofocus is picking up on that. All right, fine. There we go. Better. Um, uh, thank you, on Coder. Um, human world, you are asking to be, um, muted here. Already talked about that, Sarosh. Are entity framework CRUD operations safe from SQL injections? 
Well, Entity Framework in general is safe from SQL injection. Yes, it's when you tell it to execute SQL directly that you could be that you are susceptible to injection. Um, yes, there is first async as well. Um, how you doing there? Is that uh, Guararaj? Good morning to you in India. I bet it's evening in India though. Do multiple inner joins joins? or such code using Lambda expressions cause the query to execute slower. No, it generates the same SQL statement. Um, it's not the query that's gonna be executing slow, it's gonna be the mapping to all the different objects. Um, English first, please, in chat, particularly on YouTube, I'm seeing this issue. Is it best practice calling entities directly like context posts? Asks Fred McLean on YouTube. I've seen cases where entities extended interface and are injected into controllers and called with post repository or similar. Um, uh, yeah, using repository patterns is something I actually prefer, but you can work directly with Entity Framework if you'd like. Your choice. Um, oh, and with the ASNO tracking, this doesn't do anything at this point, right? Um, more blog posts, right? If I try and execute that, I should have cleared. That's okay. Right? It doesn't... Because I turned off tracking on this post that it fetched, it didn't actually make a change and save it. Alright? So, that's what as no tracking does. And it gives a little bit of memory benefit because it doesn't track all those objects. Really good if you're selecting a huge collection to put into like a search grid, right? A search results grid. You're not allowing folks to edit those, turn on as no tracking, and it's not gonna track those changes. So let's talk about that one-to-many relationship, left joins. Um, so I think, let me go back to the code. We've gone through a bunch of stuff here. Yep, with no tracking. Um, let's talk about this. So blog posts, tags, let's uh, create authors first as a relationship. So a in, in our little database system, we invented the ability to store blog posts. Let's allow there to be authors on a blog post. So let's create, let's create an authors class. Public class author, right? And an author has a couple properties, right? Um, right, they've got a name. Um, and let's put an email address, right? It's fine. That's all we need for that. Uh, there we go. So let's go up here. Take this. Move this to another file. So now I have authors over here. Now, we could have multiple authors on a blog post. So let's create that relationship so that an author has multiple, so that a blog post has multiple authors. Uh, no, no, sorry. Let's start with a blog post has one author, right? <clears throat> so what I would do, right? I'm gonna jump in right here and let's say public author author. the heck get set thank you right <clears throat> consequently an author has many blog posts that they wrote so let's create a collection of blog posts so we can navigate from the author to their list of blog posts so I'll create a property over here and this will be a list of blog posts and let's call this blog posts okay now an author should also have an ID here we need an a unique ID for our author. So there it is. Now I've created a new object. I need to also, if I want to be able to search this from my database context, I need to put this into my database context as another property here, right? So let's create another one, DB set author, and we'll call this. Thank you. There we go, authors. Now I've defined here's how I can get to that collection from my database context. I've 
wired up an author to a blog post. So there's a property there. And inside my author object that has its, its properties, I've also wired up a collection that will allow me to get to the blog post. This is creating what's called a one-to-many relationship. You'll see this typically rendered in, an, in a relational database like Microsoft SQL, MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, SQLite in this case. You'll see this rendered as a foreign key in one table and a primary key appearing in the other table. No, wait. You'll see a foreign key appear. Yeah, you'll see a foreign key in one table and a primary key in the other. Let's take a look. Let's create that database migration now. Um, so let's do .NET EF. We learned how to use the command line last time. It's behind me here because that that line is so long. Um, I'm going to go over to terminal then. Thank you. We'll use this terminal. Uh, dev, uh, uh, where is it? C sharp. Yep. Uh, thank you. Yep. Uh, I believe that's it. Cool. And I'm in my blog app. Cool. So let's do .NET EF migrations, uh, and we're going to have to close this. because we're going to make changes to it. So .NET EF migrations add um, add authors. Okay. So this is going to create a migration script. It's going to take a look at that database. It's going to build and generate this change statement that says, all right, let's create an authors table and define the relationship between the author and the blog post in the database. And, and it's very clear here on the few items that it added and I can take a look at exactly what that code looks like right here. So this is the migration script. We're going to add a column to the post table called author ID. This should look familiar to you if you're familiar, if you're comfortable building and working with relational databases. It is nullable because a blog post is allowed to not have an author because that is nullable, okay? I can force it to be to be required. We'll talk about that in a second here. And here I'm creating the author's table. And here, look, we have a column, <clears throat> an integer that has SQLite auto increment turned on, and that's our ID column. We're gonna create another one here for the name that is text, and we're gonna create the email address that is text as well. These are all allowed to be null except for the ID. And we're gonna add a primary key for the authors pointing to that ID field. We're also gonna create a little index over here <clears throat> for the post's author ID. So now that foreign key inside the post has, a, a, that has an index wired up to it. And we're gonna add that foreign key constraint here as well so that it can only point to values values that are valid in the authors table. Excellent. Okay. So I can apply that update with .NET EF database update and it will now patch my my file on disk, my SQLite database. There it is. Applied that migration. We saw this last time. Wanted to go over it again. So now if I go back up and we open the database. Now there is an authors table here and there is a posts table, okay? And take check it out. Author ID, there's the foreign key. Points to an author that exists somewhere in the authors table. We've created that that relationship that we can work with. Let me take a look at chat and get caught up here. Um, what's the best way to do an update of an entity with a list of many-to-many -many child objects? Depends. I, I don't know the structure of your database. I can't do that. I, I can't specify. Why do some developers prefer Dapper instead of Entity Framework? Answered that question earlier. Sorry. You can go back and rewind. 
Um, if my goal is to just get a big list as no tracking is required, I wouldn't say that it's required, but I would, I would recommend it. If you're just returning a couple hundred records that you're just going to paint on the screen inside of a, a table, a grid, turn on as no tracking with that. Um, it should use less memory to pro not to process the command, but to interact with it afterwards. Um, am I having issues with Postgres and .NET 6? No. Uh, crashes when it comes to the table with dates? Sorry. Uh, thank you, Danny, in, in Mexico. Appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, I forgot the ID. Had that, that name. Thanks, Cools Boy. Best way to store a string array in Entity Framework Core. Why is it a string array? What's, what, what's, what are you trying to get out of that? Discussing and, and how your database should be structured for whatever your application is, there's a lot of depends around that because database structure, how you optimize it, is different for every application. There is no one way to do things. Database construction, just like code, in your C Sharp or JavaScript app or, or Python app, is very dependent on what do you going to be doing with it so um doo -doo -doo -doo. yep that's right that's my terminal with my logo um uh is there any advantages to using the terminal instead of the package manager console asks mark on youtube no advantage at all it both work exactly the same way um i like to do it here on my terminal just because I've got all kinds of formatting and things going on here that help me visually pick up what's happening there. But if you like working directly in the Visual Studio Package Manager console and the PowerShell that's there, have fun. More power to you. Is it okay to edit the generated script directly? No, Dukasoft. I would definitely not recommend that. Do not modify these scripts um, I would instead add in your own changes that you're going to make um, somewhere else. Not exactly sure where else you would put it. But uh, I, I have not taken any steps to make changes to how Entity Framework interacts with the database. That's something I, I would try to avoid. Is there a SQLite extension to view the data in Visual Studio? There, somebody did write an extension for it. I don't know it off the top of my head, but there is a way to do that. Focusing screen, please. Um, we're, we're trying to stay as focused as possible here. What do we got? Are there ways to subscribe to changes? Subscribe to changes. I don't know what you're referring to. Um, a Fritz theme, Visual Studio theme would be nice. Oh, thank you. Um, hey, Frackberg. Will everything work the same on an Ubuntu machine? Yes, James, it will. Um, .NET is fantastic like that. So, yeah, I'm still kind of out of focus. What's the deal? Why is this... Come on. Focus. Yeah. It's still kind of... Just out of focus, a little soft. Mm. All right. Um, any plans for identity and user management? No. Can we merge Microsoft Identity DB context with your DB context? Yes, you can. <laughs> Maybe the camera needs new glasses. No, nah, it's. It was focused and. Yeah, I'm. Uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. One second. One second. Let me see if I can. Um. All right. Uh, is this a .NET 6 project? Yes. Have I disabled Nullable? Yes, I did. I did disable Nullable for this project um, just because I didn't want to get too wrapped up. 
with activating and managing that and discussing it. Um, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to get a little bit of help here with that focus, see if we can clean that up. Um, Mondays are always kind of fuzzy, especially after a long holiday weekend. Um, is there built-in Azure authentication available? Completely different topic. Sorry, not going to get into that. Um, there is Azure Active Directory authentication available in your ASP.NET apps and in other apps. Configuring it and how you get into that is a topic for a different different time. No, it's not lower cam resolution. No. Um, okay. So I we did a little bit of many. Here we go. So there's a barrel there on the camera. Take a look at as you're looking at the screen on the back of the camera. Do you see it? It's all the way up against it. Yeah, turn that just a little bit. See if we can get me a little bit sharper. There we go. Keep going. Just a little bit more. Try turning the other way. Ah, I'm moving all over the place. Look at this. Ah! <laughs> kind of trying to fix the camera here on the fly. It's the focus that we're trying to change. No, it's not making a difference. Okay. Thanks anyway. I'm what? Yeah, on the screen on the back of the camera? I am in focus. Okay. Oh, all right. Maybe it's something else that we need to adjust. Okay. Thank you. So that was Mrs. C Sharp for its helping out behind the scenes. Um, let me see here. So, all right. Are there any automated tools for upgrading from EF to EF core? Um, take a look at take a look at the upgrade assistant. It should get you there. The, and most of the stuff that that if you're using typical entity framework interactions should work directly. I am in focus on the TV. All right, it, up in here looked a little bit out of focus, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that was Mrs. C Sharp Fritz. Big thanks to her for helping out there. When setting up a new ASP project with ASP identity, do I put everything into one DB context or keep identity in a separate one any benefits once again depends if i've only got a couple of simple objects in my database keep it all in one you could put them in separate uh database contexts to make management a little bit easier so you're not inadvertently editing the same context where you have all your security stuff depends am i using windows xp no i'm using windows 311 Moving on, let's talk about putting an author into the database and getting them assigned to one of our blog posts. So I'm going to go back over to program here. That, that was a joke in case you missed it. Never mind. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, create a, let, let's create an author. Let's call this new author equals no, new author. And uh, let's say name equals uh, C sharp Fritz and email address equals Jeff at Jeffrey Fritz.com. Okay. And now we can say CTX authors add new author. And uh, we can also say CTX Let's do CTX posts find one and we could say dot author equals a uh, new author. And now I can say t CTX dot save changes. Let me also go over to author and add a let's add a two string to this. Uh, to really. You're not going to give me that. Ugh. 
public str uh, override string to string and uh, let's have it output name and we'll put in the brackets email address thank you okay so he needs this for the birdie let's see how this works can't type clear right thank you one more time okay so there's the titles so let's comment that out Just go back down here item dot uh no we got to format this uh da -da -da, like this item dot author end quote one more time here we go and it didn't pick up the authors wait a sec i thought we added i thought we that you know what? Probably because I didn't save it first is what I'm thinking. Uh, let's go find that author and add it again. New author equals uh, CTX authors. Come on now. Now we should see it. There it is. My first post. C sharp Fritz. There we go. All right. Cool. So I've created an author. I've associated it with the post. And when, if we take a look at what's in the database, right, if we look at our authors table, there's C sharp Fritz. You can't see it, it's behind me. There's the C Sharp Fritz author record. You're not gonna let me just go execute willy-nilly whatever I want here, are you? There you go. So there's the blog posts and you see the author ID is set the way you would expect it to be to make that relationship. So we've created that one to many relationship from author to post. And I can go the other way and I can Right, I can come back through on the program, and I'm going to get to many to many in just a second here. Um, instead of saying recent posts and loading those up, um, I can let's create another recent posts. Let's say var recent blog posts equals await ctx dot authors first dot blog posts um, to array right uh, you can't await that that's fine I should have a to array async on that but no matter so now it's going to show just that first authors now why didn't it give me those back um because I went to authors first, and I went to get their blog posts. I should have gotten it coming back the other way. Because that's... Um, hang on. Uh, include. No. No. Blog posts. There we go. And that is right dot blog posts. There we go. Now it'll see it. That's what I needed to do. So the include says do this join. There we go. There's the blog post. So because I want to make that join and bring back those blog posts at the same time that I query. I have to use an include statement to make sure that it brings back the foreign side of the relationship, right? So 
the primary key is the author and it's in the foreign my foreign key the author id is in the blog posts so i need to fetch those and in, say include so i get them coming back all right um scrolling repository or cqrs pattern way off topic sorry um doo -doo 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 -doo. okay all right so i've worked with now this one to many let me go through and show you the many to many relationship because i want to create a relationship from a blog post to tags right so let's create a class for a tag and we'll create a property for an ID of the tag and we'll create a name of the tag, okay? And I'll do a little bit of refactor here to move it to its own file. Now, starting with Entity Framework Core 5, I can do many to many relationships just by embedding a collection reference to that other object. So I can say public, uh, is it I collection um, tag? I can call this tags. And that says there's a group of these things over there that we're going to connect to. And from here, I can say public I collection uh, blog post posts. Okay. Now. I can go back over, I didn't want to do it there. Let me do it over here again. .NET EF migrations add, um, adding uh, add tags. All right, so it's gonna build, generate the migration for this. There we go. And now I'll update the database, EF database update. And we'll have our database updated with a tags table and with that relationship, that many-to-many -many relationship, because a blog post can have many tags, and those tags can be applied to many blog posts. So now when we look over here, we have a tag table. We have in our blog, in our posts, right, nothing's changed there. But we now have this new intermediate table, blog post tag, that has a post ID, posts ID, and a tags ID. So that it shows here's the relationship from a blog post to a tag. We can have many records with the same post pointing to different tags. Okay? So that's the typical way in a relational database you create this many to many architecture. So let's go back over to the program. And let's create some tags. Uh, new tag equals new tag. Uh, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it this way. CTX. Oh, I didn't add. I didn't add it to. <laughs> I didn't add it to our database context, so I can't query it directly. Public DB set tag tags. Okay. So now I can say tags add. Let's do add range so we can add a bunch of these at once. Uh, new tag name equals uh, C sharp. Uh, new tag, uh, not namespace, name equals uh, entity framework. New tag name equals ASP.NET core. Let's put one more in here. Uh, new tag name equals Blazor. Okay. Yeah. And now I'll do CTX tags, uh, not tags, CTX save changes. And it'll add those tags to the database because I said this add range. Just went through and didn't do it quite right. Uh, no such table tags. Um, sure there is. Oh, it's tag. Um, rats. Go back. 
back over here. Uh, .NET EF database uh, migrations add uh, tag reference. That shouldn't have been needed, but uh -huh. and update it one more time. So it generates that connection. There we go. And now yeah. dot net run again should add those tags to the database. There we go. Um, and if we look over here in my tags, what, what? There, tags. It's over here. There we go. So there's my tags in the database. I can add those now to a blog post. So I'll comment those out. <clears throat> Uh, let's get rid of this. We don't want to save that. Um, save that, but I'll do it up here. Let's call this tag CTX tags where uh, T dot. Oh, come on, man. Uh, let's go get the C sharp tag. Uh, first, I should have done that. Let's do it over here. Like that. Um, post, find the first one. Tags dot add. Tags. Like that. Save changes. And I'm just going to let that ride. I'm looking at my time here. I got three minutes to go. Update that. Uh, object reference not set. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Um, you know what? Inside posts. Where is it? Here. I've always had to do this to find a default for this thing. Otherwise, it kind of chokes and is like, oh, you couldn't do that. So there, it completed. Go back over here and rerun that query on, not, uh, blog post tag. Let's look at that table now. There we go. So for post one, it has tag one associated with it. Done. I now have that relationship from my blog post to my tags. I have two minutes left. I didn't get into database first again. That's okay. Um, I'm gonna just wrap it up there. Let me head over to the other system. We covered a lot today. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Back over to here. Whew. Um, as we wrap up, as we get ready, the folks that are watching on Learn TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hey, let's let's stop the uh, that music. We covered a lot. Oh my goodness. Yes, who needs database first? <laughs> uh, no, there's documentation on that. I'm not going to get into it today. Um, I am going to be out next week. Um, I'm going to be in Las Vegas for an in-person conference presenting, teaching there, teaching all about Blazor. Um, I've done a number of other streams teaching about Blazor. We're going to come back the week after that. And we're going to get into a brand new topic. Um, I think we're going to get into doing some uh, ASP.NET Core development, building websites with everything that we learned with C Sharp. <clears throat> we'll get into that next here on stream. And we're going to set up so that we can, in January, February, we're going to talk about F Sharp with some folks and teach about that. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate you joining me. If you're watching there on YouTube, check out all the rest of the videos in this series. You can find them in the C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz playlist in the .NET channel. Should be linked somewhere just below in the description. Thank you so much for watching.
And those of you that are watching on Twitch, <clears throat> it's time for a raid. Let's get connected with another streamer out on the big Twitch TV network and send you off to watch, hang out with some other folks. <clears throat> um, taking a look around the horn here at somebody else who's broadcasting that we can get you connected with. Um, I think... Looking... Um, you know what? Our friends on the Microsoft Developer Channel just got started talking about green and sustainable software. Thank you so much, friends. We're going to send you over there as part of a raid. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to be left off. You're going to be able to see some other suggested videos. And I, I hope you enjoy those on the .NET channel. If you're watching on Twitch, hang in tight. And we're going to head over to the Microsoft Developer Channel in just a few seconds. My name is Jeff Fritz. I'll see you in two weeks. We're going to start talking about ASP.NET Core right here. Have a good one. Oh yeah, okay, good. Justin's muted.